Can the defense be fixed? That is the conversation on today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Wildcats Today, joined as always by my co-host, Carson Nash. Carson, how you doing? Not so great today, Andrew. Not so great. Yeah, I know. I knew you wouldn't be. Um, that's okay. We're going to fight through it. Uh, we're going to get through this. So, I mean, let's get straight into it. Carson and I just sat. I um, shared my screen on here, and we watched pretty much every offensive possession of the game for Tennessee. And, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's hard to see it when you watch the game the first time just because, you know, you're, you're enjoying the game, so it's hard to see it first time. But when you rewatch it like that, the defensive issues – stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, it's every possession. It's like you pause it, and it's like there's four guys that have a wide-open shot. Not just one. You could swing it here, 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 here. This guy's open. This guy's open. So, Carson, here's my question for you. Let's get into it. Let's break it down. What were the defensive issues you saw? Can they be fixed? And if the answer to that question is yes, what does Kentucky have to do to fix those issues? Yeah, so one thing that I did see, of course, the number one glaring issue is we are getting beat off the dribble every time they bring the ball up the court. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, just that's that's the number one issue. And that's that's not super in depth, but that's definitely the biggest problem. Yes, it is. But, but <laughs> some of the things that I saw that were also issues for us were um every so we would get beat off the dribble and their big big guy, Adu, mm -hmm. would kind of seal off. Ugana, um, in the paint, he'd have a better position um, in there, and he would seal them off. So they pretty much had a wide-open layup whenever they wanted to because Ugana didn't really try to fight through that. And so we had no help. And you saw that multiple times in the game where Ziegler would run straight down right past Reed, and uh, Adu would seal off Ugana, and they would get a wide-open layup. And it, it's really wide area. open. Like yeah. we need to reiterate, we're just talking wide open, wide like open. drop it in. Yes. Like, like me and Andrew open. would score every time off of this. Yeah. Maybe not Andrew. But <laughs> so the second thing I saw was they were running this action where they would have a guard like Connect or Viscovi or there was a there was another one, maybe Mayshack, but yeah. They would run their guard through the – so Ziegler would have the ball up top. They'd run their guard through the middle of the paint, and he would kind of circle around a one of their big guys on the block, and their big guy would, like, screen uh, – it, it was either Dillingham or Reed Shepard. They'd kind of go after one of those two guys every time down the court. They would screen Dillingham or Reed, and they would get caught up on the screen. And when I say they had space, they had a – lot of space to shoot the ball on mid-range shots and if if they didn't shoot it then then someone else would come help and they'd leave someone open in the corner for three so those are two glaring things i saw um but the biggest is definitely just getting beat off the dribble allows you to just kind of fall apart because then everything becomes open yeah i mean i'm with you i think um what really grinded my gears was that um we saw it, i think two or three times at least where they would throw the ball down to Adu, and then you would pause, pause it. He has the ball. There would be four Kentucky players crashing on Adu, but they weren't like doing anything. They were just standing there. And then you look, there are three guys standing outside three point line, wide open, to where you could kick it to either one of those guys, and they have a wide. And when I'm talking wide, I'm talking you could take a breath before you go into your shot form, wide open three. And, I mean, one of those players that was open back there was Connect. How in the world is he ever left wide open in the game plan? And, you know, what frustrates me, I've I, there's a narrative going around that I disagree with. Uh, uh, some of it that I've seen is that the defense is all um, – effort and mental, which, which let's be honest, that's something I've said here. I, I've thought more about this and I want to change my mind, but I'm still seeing this narrative go around throughout the media. I think that I agree with you guard play, the defense, the defensive struggles have all been, you know, mental. I think that with the big guys, they are getting bullied. I think, I, I think that there was another position where um and a do missed a shot actually, but and that's where you kind of learn about the defense is almost missed shots. 
I mean, he just bullied. Was it Bradshaw or you guys? It was Bradshaw. It was Bradshaw. Just bullied him. Bullied. It was Bradshaw. And then and then we got caught looking at the ball, and Meshack came up on the other side and put in the put in the that basket. That play is the perfect example of the problem. That play. Go watch that play. Um, yeah, Adu bullies Bradshaw, gets the wide openest look you could ever have, misses it. Adu turns around, looks for the rebound. Instead of boxing out, there comes Meshack. He gets the offensive rebound, lays it in. Frustrating, folks. Um, and I mean, so what I would argue <clears throat> is that in, with the guards, yes, I think that it is. And I don't think it's – I think effort, in all honesty, I don't think effort to, to me is the right term. I think the right term is, you know, un, they aren't aware. There's no the lack of, you know, the awareness of what's going on. I mean, you know, defense is feel. It's more than just effort and it's more than mental. I mean, it's obviously all part of it. And it's more than, you know, flat out being a good athlete. It's knowing where to be. Um, and, you know, the guards are not getting to where they need to be. <clears throat> I'm fighting demons over here. They're not getting to where they need to be. And, you know, I sit and I said to myself, like, it, it, you need to watch your guy. Stay with your guy. Fight through screens. This is what's frustrating. But, no, down low, I'll admit, I do think there is a folks getting bullied problem down low. And Trey Mitchell as well. Listen, this is not just – um, you go Bradshaw. We didn't see Z in this game. He was um sick, but you know, I mean, Mitchell as well. I mean, they're getting bullied, bullied. The, the seal offs, like you said, Carson. I mean, they're getting sealed to where Ziegler, I mean, and Ugo is just standing there like, ah, ah like trying to read. No, you know, you got manhandled, and now Ziegler has a wide open layup, and um. You know, obviously losing this game to Tennessee sucks. It's a rivalry game. Here's the deal. Tennessee is a much, much better team than Kentucky. And you can't watch that game and think otherwise. And what's frustrating is this team has the talent to be, you know, better than this than this Tennessee team. And that's a veteran team and all that. I get that. And I agree with that. But I guess my point here, Carson, is, is just the defense. I'm getting to a point. And I, I don't like to be negative unless I have to be. And y'all know that. But I'm getting to a point where I'm saying to myself, can this be fixed? And I'm starting. Here's the panic button. I'm, I'm hovering over it. I haven't pressed it yet, but I'm hovering right here. So, I mean, Carson, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so in the post game, I mean, there's a lot of questions going around. Players were out there, and they're they're like, what, what needs to be fixed? What, what can you do? Like, is it an effort thing? Is it just not knowing where you're supposed to be? And Rob kind of went along the lines of like, if we really want to buy in, like we we're gonna buy in and do it. So I I guess they know what I guess they know what they're doing wrong, and they're just not fixing it. But does that I, make you mad though? I saw that quote as well. Does yeah, that that uh, makes in all honesty, that makes me like, this is you should want to win maybe. Yeah, and I'm not saying no knocking no knock to Rob. Rob was incredible if, if, if someone can say it it's, it's gonna be him because he yes. he played out of his mind yes but once again you know now you're zero and three without dj wagner so that's yeah he's yeah. a big piece there not not yeah. having him um and and i don't think that i i wouldn't go as far to say we lost these those three games no. because wagner was out i want to mm. say that because folks are going to comment that you know i want to but not having dj wagner is a big deal you got to play a mm. lot of guys extra minutes people are tired and also, Wagner's a guy who can just put his head down and go get a bucket when he wants, I think. Yeah, and I also think, like, if you have Wagner, Wagner's a lot more athletic than Reed is, so staying in front of Ziegler would have been not as much of an issue had we had him. But no doubt, there, that's not the reason why we lost the game. The reason why we lost the game is because we got punked, pretty much. We weren't yeah. physical. They were more physical. They wanted it. They got most of the loose balls, even though some of them you yes, couldn't really yeah. control. But they, they got most of the loose balls. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm, I bet they out-rebounded us because none of our big guys had over 10 rebounds. and none of We had four combined points between Aaron Bradshaw, Hugo, and Trey Mitchell. So if you're getting that, you, your recipe to lose a game is, is what that is. I mean, does – so, you know, we're getting – let me pull up rebounds. Yeah, we got out-rebounded 38-44. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, 
where my head's at now, this is we got to put this behind us as as painful as it is, but you, you got to put it behind you. It, it, but to me, it's like, what do you do? What do you do? Go, you got you. I mean, like, let's pull up the schedule you still have left. You still have to go to Auburn, to LSU, to Mississippi State, and to Knoxville. I mean, this can get out of hand really, really quick if you are not careful. Now, you've also still got some layups up there. You got home against Vandy, home against um, Arkansas at Vandy. Um, you know, there's still some, there's some freebies here you know so i mean but i mean i just don't know i'm getting to a point where it, this defense is like and what first is me carson i mean they're working on this in practice we know that it's not like they're like you know guys let's work on our jump shot that's you know <laughs> we know they're working on this and there has been no improvement you could argue it's gotten worse now yes it's gotten worse because you're playing better a competition obviously that makes sense but um I, I just don't know and once again car i you know you and i hate sitting here being negative that's the last thing we want to be but at the end of the day i i just don't know I, i'm i'm struggling to see solutions yeah at um, some point you have to face the facts whether you want to be negative or not yeah and actually this defense is terrible and yeah. that's the only right word for it and person king palm this is the first time since Billy G was here that we've let up 100 points at home to an opponent. And that was when Billy G was here. We let VMI score over 100 points, which oh, gosh. Gosh. But it's the first time since he was here since we've let up 100 points at home. And to do that to a Rick Barnes coach Tennessee team is ridiculous because they're not a good offensive team. Yeah. 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 Um. Well, I mean, they're they're fine. They're not, you know what I mean. They're not yeah, bad. What, what I mean is, they're not like explosive. They're not, they're not like us offensively. Yes, I agree with you on that. Um, what but that mean? Um, also, like what I said on the last podcast, I said if you can let Connect beat you, but you can't let everyone else beat you. You made a great and point. You, yeah, and you let and you let Zakai Ziegler and Jordan, Josiah Jordan James combine for fifty two points. That mm -hmm. can't happen. No. Those two guys are not known scorers. They're not. Yeah. So to allow those two guys to combine for 52 points shows you that one, they were open because you know they can't create. And yeah. two, it, it's ridiculous. It, like, you, can't, you can't allow that to happen. If Connect had 40 and they both had two points, I bet we win that game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, here's – I got a question for you. Um. You know, talking a little bit more big picture on this, what 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 is your confidence this team can get past the round of thirty two? In all, be honest with me, what is your confidence level at right now? Right now, it's not high at all, just because defensively, it and I mean, we have the offense to play with anybody. We're going to be able to play with anybody, but if you have a defense like this, you can lose to anybody. You yeah. can you can lose to a sixteen to it. 15 every single team in the yeah. tournament can beat you so at that point you're just hoping and praying you outscore the team and that can't be what you're living on and banking on in march and and i we at first i thought maybe this team could i thought maybe they were that good offensively but i also thought the defense wasn't this bad then you would think it would have gotten better exactly was at. um i mean to me the only hope you got here is if something just clicks when this team when, when it's hey we're, it, we're, it's winter we're, we're going home that's the only hope. I, I've well, got. my opinion, my opinion also is they kind of need to start buying in a little more. Yeah, and if that means sacrificing being a little tired, more tired on offense, yeah, then so be it. But Rob and Reed, that I'm only picking them out because that's kind of where we saw our glaring weaknesses. Of course, our big guys got punked too, and them getting sealed out is the reason why they scored. They that, they probably had ten points off of wide open layups, but. Um, Reed and Rob kind of looked like they were just standing around on some of the plays. So you, you, they need to go find a man to at least just cover yeah. instead of just standing around. And so they, they just need to buy in and they have to have show more effort on the defensive end. And if they don't do that, then I don't see them getting past the round of 32. Yeah. Maybe, maybe sweet 16. And do me another sense. favor, Carson. Maybe. While I, while I say something, go pull up. Uh, Joe Tipton's Twitter real quick. Have you seen that yeah. yet? Have you seen this? Mm -hmm. 
uh, the the recruit that was here. Um, oh no, I did see this. The shovel and stuff. Oh my gosh! No, I don't even want it. Okay, I'll get started on it. Um, but that's yeah, a so to me, I think that's worth the conversation. I mean, this yeah, stuff- so it's definitely worth the conversation. I was just uh, very upset about it today during work. But I mean, what was the what was the recruit's name again? I forgot. It's um, Malik Thomas. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe it's Malik Thomas. I know his last name is Thomas. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But so there was a five star recruit in attendance for the Kentucky Tennessee game, and there was pictures surfacing of his visit. And it was him in a Kentucky jersey, which is normal, but he was he was with a white background, just all yeah. white. Everything was white. Um, he was wearing like a white jersey, so it didn't really like look great to begin with. And he had like a shovel and like some glasses on, like stuff for a visit, but and then, then you compare about, we're it. talking a shovel. We're talking a shovel that you could seriously go get at five below. Yeah, you could you could like, buy this you could buy shovel. shovel at Walgreens. Like it's it's like a paper or not paper, like a plastic little kid's yeah. shovel. And then one of those big hats, which that's fine. Yeah. Um, but in comparison to Cooper Flagg's visit at Duke, where yeah. he was holding a uh I, I don't know what that's called. Do you know what that's called? The little trident thing. I guess yeah. it was a trident, a trident that was on fire on their court with their banners behind him. And it was like dark in there and the fi- you could see him because of the fire. So our, I think our recruiting has to step up a bit. I know we're yeah. still going to get good players because we're Kentucky and, and Cal is going to get good players. At but, some point, though. Col- yeah, at some point you, it's going to catch up to you. You can't rely on the word culture at some point. Yeah. At some point you have to play the game, mm-hmm. you know. Because Coach Cal does the whole, hey, I mean, if you don't want to be here, go somewhere else. You know, yeah. you know, I mean, let's be honest. You know, these recruits. No, to be honest, like Kentucky's this. falling behind in that aspect. Look at yeah. the Joe Craft Center. Look at the Lodge. Both those places, if you tour any school that's a top five basketball school, we are getting destroyed in that aspect. They have nicer facilities than us. Yeah, They have a nicer living space than us. And it's it's gonna show, and the recruit and the visits and all that. I don't know if it was just that certain visit, but it it is not comparable to these top schools that were, that we're losing recruits to. And that's that somebody's we, job, you know. Yeah. I've seen this kid's pictures. He took a visit to Auburn. I've seen those pictures. They're they're cool. They're cool mm-hmm. looking. And I mean, that's a school you should never. And right now, this dude's, um, you know, on three, the recruit prediction, whatever they're called, predicted to go to all top 10 yeah. player. You can't be losing players like that, to, especially to SEC schools. Can't happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's a, there's a larger conversation to be had about the state of the Kentucky basketball program, Carson. And I hate to say that, but I agree. Look, and that's not today. We won't do that today. And listen, I don't want folks to um, I don't want folks to think, listen, we're being negative. Yes. I mean, obviously, we can't sit here and pretend like we're not. But after a, a painful loss, I think you see a lot of people pull up those negative stats and those numbers and you, that you really sit back and you go, wow, how is this possible? And some of these numbers are just starting to hit me to where you, it's like the, Kentucky basketball hasn't been Kentucky basketball, I mean, for a really long time. In all honesty, since the year um, where the COVID canceled the tournament, mm-hmm. that team would have gone on a run. And I, yeah. I mean, am I wrong? Do you think? Uh, I mean, since no, then, that team, I, I agree. That team would have gone on a run. So, but I'm saying since then. Oh yeah, no. That's what and I'm saying. Even even a couple years before then too, like some of those teams. Yeah, I mean they were good. Basketball. And um, Tyler Hero team was good. The team was mm-hmm. good uh, when the COVID year got canceled. I mean, uh, that, like, but then I don't know. Um, you know, so I know that we're 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 laying a lot of negatives today, folks, and we don't want to be doing that. But man, it's just it's hard not to be when you look at some of the stuff. And I mean, you, well, you here's look- a crazy stat: Rick Barnes is seven and one against Kentucky when we're in the top ten. So I mean, that can't happen. No, you are Kentucky basketball, and your main rival is beating you seven times out of eight when you're in the top ten. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like that, that cannot happen. I get Cal and him are friends. You shouldn't be friends with the coach of Tennessee. No. I don't care. If you're coaching Tennessee and I'm coaching Kentucky, we are not friends anymore. Yes. And I and listen, I like Rick Barnes for the record. He's a good dude. 
Like, yeah, just, no, he's you know, a, and he's a good coach. He doesn't have he, a ton of tournament success to prove it, but he's yeah. he's constantly wins. You know, he's he always has them ranked really high. He was good at Texas. He had Kevin Durant, but mm. you can't be seven and one against your yeah. main rival. I agree. And I'm not going to fight you on that. Um. All right, we're, we're not going to get deep into Vandy. I wrote down here. Are you ready for um, Carson? You ready for the numbers on Vandy? Mm -hmm. I wrote them down. Okay. Vandy is awful. <laughs> and then it says numbers. Um, I'm serious. I sat down, and that's a joke. And and goodness, they need to beat Vandy. So this that does not come back to bite me in the behind because that was a oh joke. but oh gosh. Um, if we but, lose to Vandy, we have big 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 problems. Yes, but that's a joke. But in all honesty, the issue. I mean, I was trying to pull something that stands out for Vandy. I mean, they are shooting. Let me pull it up. 39% from the field. Yeah. 28% from three, 70% from the free throw line. Turn the ball over 10.8 uh, times, times a game. Um, assisting on nine baskets a game, nine assists a game. Um, 35 rebounds a game. They're scoring 66 points a game. I mean, this is a horrible basketball team that you need to go and embarrass. Yeah, you, you – this is where you learn a little bit about, about a team. And Vandy, I'm sorry, you know, because I have a, a feeling that Vandy's going to get kind of hammered because I don't think I, – I don't care how bad the defense is. I just don't think Vandy can – I don't think they're good enough. You know what I mean? I, I don't – Yeah, and I mean, this um, is a perfect midweek game for us right now. I mean, yeah. you're, you're kind of falling there. apart. You're kind of falling apart. Now. It's there. It's a road game. But, you know, you need more road experience because we haven't been good on the road this year. Yeah. So – you get your road experience against a bad team, and you get to practice more on the defensive end. So you know it's a, it's a good midweek game. I'm glad get we're right having in. this game. Get I'm right glad in. we're having this instead of Mississippi State. You know, yeah. away right now. So you know, uh, so I, I don't know. I, I think it's a get right game. Yeah. Yes. Um. So I'm not. My point here is what what Kentucky needs to go do. This is where you learn a lot about is this team. You know what I mean? Do they have that mentality they need to have? You know that. And what we're that is, are they should be angry? You lose a game to Florida that you should have won. I mean, let's be honest, you should have won that game. You should yep. not have won the Tennessee game. You played no. awful in that game. No, Tennessee punked us. Yeah, you still should have won that Florida game. And, and and even if you had won that game, the that lost Tennessee, you'd be embarrassed and angry coming in this one. You need yeah. to go and absolutely embarrass this team. And I feel bad for them. I'm sorry, Vandy. I mean, I hate having to pick on Vandy. Um, yeah. And baseball another thing, like and Bandy, um, but so Florida, Florida and Tennessee are our two biggest rivals in the conference. Am I wrong? They I have been new ones are while. developing, but I mean long yeah. term, yeah. But long term, like yes, Florida long term, and Tennessee yeah. are our two yes. rivals. You lose to them at home in the same week, back to back Embarrassing. games. Embarrassing. That it cannot is. happen. It you know, I mean, happen. there's a standard that comes with Kentucky basketball. You know what I mean? I mean, it's mm -hmm. it, it's winning. It's winning basketball games, you know. And I, we were talking before the show, and I was kind of telling you some things, and I, I threw this stout, stat out. I heard it somewhere, but um, we've only lost back to back eight times ever at home. Three of those eight were in the past four years. Yeah, that's, which is nuts. And I know, get there's probably more parity in college basketball now than there ever has been because of the transfer portal, the COVID years. Yeah, but you, that can't happen as a as a Kentucky like your Kentucky basketball. It can't happen. I agree with you. I'm with you. I, I'm with you. So Carson, um, I'm sorry, folks. I know it's Monday, and if if anybody came here for your two buddies Carson and Andrew to cheer you up, I'm sorry, but that today's just not a day for that. Hey, we can uh, hey we can highlight we can highlight Dillingham's performance on the offensive end. Do that. Dillingham was was and I'll tell you this right now. Can I can I give you a bold prediction? And I don't think yeah. it's that bold. And I I'm willing uh, and I hope you ride this bet with me, Carson. I bet mm -hmm. right now, and I will put probably you know 10 bucks on this. Rob mm -hmm. Dillingham will will be the NBA rookie of the year next season. I'm willing I, to I like that call because I was telling my dad during the game, I was like, Rob can go to the NBA and average 20 plus right now. He's so good on off. I mean, he's now there's, there's more space in the NBA. Yeah. And you don't, now you don't want to become a defensive liability and that's going to be, yeah. you know, but, but at, let's be honest. The NBA doesn't care about defense. Yeah. Steph Curry's a defensive liability. So is Trey, Young. 
I was going to bring up the same thing. And they're about the same size as Dillingham, you know. Yeah. So, um, um, good, you know, wait, 14 for 20, right, from the field, 20, uh, 35 points. I mean, it was just yeah. absurd. So, and um, also in the while. NBA, you're not going to have a bunch of other defensive liabilities on the court. So you can have a defensive liability at one of the spots, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Carson, give me a score prediction for the Vandy game. Give me uh, MVP, and we're going to get out of here. Yeah, so I'm going to go – I'm going to say uh, we're going to break 90. I think we get 92. I think it's going to be 92 to 69. Kentucky wins. It's more of a get-right game. You hold them under 70, that would be good. Um, I really hope this game's not close because yeah. I'll feel a lot worse about the team if it is. Um, you got – this team has to put their losses behind them. We're young. It's a young team. You got to right the ship. You got to show some more effort on the defensive end. You have yeah. the explosiveness. So if you start buying in and you start getting better defense, you never know what's going to happen. UConn last year did not look good in the regular season, and they won the whole thing. Yeah. So all it, all that matters is you start today. Today yeah. you start getting back to what you need to do and forget about everything else. Mm-hmm. You need to win some games to help your seeding. But as long as you're not super low, you can do you can do anything. So, yeah. and I'm with you. That's the positive side of this. Is is, is this thing can turn around? It can. So yeah, and uh, I'm gonna MVP. go MVP. I'm gonna say, huh? I'll go with. I'm gonna say DJ plays and DJ is gonna get MVP. I think DJ is gonna play too. I, Cal was gonna say that. He mm-hmm. was going to say that at his post game presser, but then I think he was like, "Ooh, if he somehow doesn't, the world will burn." So I'm going to yeah. not say that. Mm-hmm. So DJ, um, I, you know what's funny? I wrote that I had 92.71 for the score. You had 92.69, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I have 92.71 written down here, and I have below that Reeves 30 points. Very okay. Simple. Score I was going to pick Reeves, but then I was like, I, I've been picking Reeves too much. It's pretty generic, but I think he's going to score 30 points. Is why? Is why? <laughs> yeah. That'd be so, nice. Yeah. Anything else, Carson, to say? Uh, no, nothing else, really. Just, you know, a bummer of a loss. But like I said, can't look can't look back on it. You know, just move on, delete the tape, just yeah. put some more effort into it and kind of, you know, act like you want to be there. Lay, Get out on the floor. Who cares if you get a little banged up, you know? Yeah. I'm with you. Do it, for with your, you. do it for your teammates. Let's go. Yep. All right. Well, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. Go ahead and hit that like button on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It really, really does help grow the channel. Um, we are Once again, we are now on podcast platforms. Go and leave a five-star review on podcast platforms. Listen to us there as well. We will have a uh, you know post-game show and a preview of the Gonzaga game coming up later in the week. But that's going to do it for today. Hope everybody has a great rest of their day today, and we will see you next time.